Hi again everyone, we're back again with another update on OES 2015. This time we're going to take a look at how a native Active Directory user can access an OES file system. Let's start things off by creating a brand new AD user. Here we are on our AD server, so we're just going to launch our Active Directory administration tool and create our brand new user. Our user's name is Clark Kent, so we're just going to type these credentials in here for him. And then we finish off by setting his password so that he can actually log into AD. The next thing that we need to do is set up this user's home directory and assign the rights so that he can actually access it. As you know, in Windows or in the Microsoft world, you have to use Windows Explorer to do these kinds of things. So here we open up Windows Explorer. We have a drive that is mapped to our OES server and we're gonna create our user um, Clark's home directory under the user's container. We're then going to go through and set up all of the rights that he needs to have access to the file system. To manage the rights the way we are here, our user administrator has been granted rights to the OES file system and on our workstation we have the Novell File Access Rights Management plugin installed inside of Windows Explorer to give us access to the NSS rights here. So now that our user exists inside of Active Directory, let's actually try to log in and see what will happen. So here we have a workstation that is part of our Altair demo domain. Um, we're going to go ahead and log in as our user Clark by entering his username and password. When we hit enter, it's going to take a couple of seconds to set up this user's workspace because they've never logged into the workstation before um, on this domain. Next, let's open Windows Explorer and take a look at the drive mappings that we have. We have a group policy object that will actually map the user's home directory to drive H. It seems we do indeed have a drive letter H mapped to our home directory. So let's go ahead and create a file. We'll just call this Clark's home directory uh, for now. So far, we've created a brand new user inside of Active Directory. Uh, and then we've used that user ID to go to a workstation joined to the domain to log in. We've mapped a drive to what we think is our home directory and created a new file. So let's lastly switch over to the OES server to see what that looks like there. Here we are on our OES server. We're going to go ahead and log in as our root user who has full rights to the file system. As you can see, we have two volumes, Data32, which is traditional 32-bit NSS, and Data64, which is our new 64-bit NSS. Our users' home directories are on Data32 under a directory called Users. So if we expand that and take a look at what we see there, we do see a directory called Clark. Inside of that directory is indeed a file called Clark's home directory that we just created from the Windows PC connected to the domain. So again, in summary, we've created a brand new user inside of Active Directory. This user did not previously exist inside of eDirectory. Using that user ID, we were able to go to a workstation joined to the domain and log into AD. The group policy within AD mapped that user to a home directory on the OAS file system. And when we logged in and created a file, we couldn't see that it was indeed mapped to the OES server. Hopefully this gives you a better understanding of what's coming in OES 2015. We will be launching a public beta soon, so please watch for that and try some of these capabilities out for yourself. Thank you very much.